Raskolnikov stood in front of the strange humming machine, his hand trembling on the lever. The weight of his crime, murdering the old pawnbroker, still gnawed at his soul. But what did a soul matter anymore? This machine, with its flickering lights and otherworldly hum, promised something more. Escape. Freedom. A chance to rewrite the past or forge a new future. With a deep breath, he pulled the lever. A rush of cold wind enveloped him, and the world spun around him in a blur of color and sound. When he opened his eyes, the gray streets of St. Petersburg were gone. He stood on a stage, bathed in neon lights, his hands gripping an electric guitar. The roar of a crowd surged toward him, thousands of fans screaming his name, Raskolnikov. He strummed the guitar, and the sound exploded from the speakers, drowning out the noise of the crowd. In this future, he had become a rock star, an idol worshipped by millions. The same brilliance and madness that had led him to murder now poured into his music. His lyrics were dark, cryptic, filled with an almost demonic energy. The crowds loved him for it. He became more than a musician. He was a prophet, leading a generation toward rebellion, nihilism, and destruction. But as the years passed, the power he held over his followers warped his mind. He grew bitter, detached, his once fragile morality dissolving in the adulation of his fans. His music became a vehicle for something darker, an anthem for chaos, a call to violence. Slowly, his transformation was complete. The world no longer saw him as a mere rock star. They saw him as something far more sinister. He began to wear a dark cloak, his once disheveled appearance now a carefully curated image of malevolent authority. His speeches grew more venomous, his fans more fanatical. His influence spread beyond the music, seeping into politics, society, and the minds of his followers. They began to act in his name, burning, looting, killing. Cities fell into anarchy.